found something there. Verse 21, he said, The Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. 22, and said, The rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam now said, This is the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And it shall be called woman. Every man here, turn and look at the woman sitting beside him. He said, you are part of my rib. If I have God has not taken my rib, you won't be alive. I am saying this. is the Bible that is saying it. It's not Fred Asa. Tell them. You are part of my rib. Yes. Thank you. You shall thank us. Because of this, we got to the next stage. The person God has chosen to speak today is part of our own rib. Do you see the correlation? <laughs> it's not from outside. It's not from the moon. No. This one it is from our own highway of holiness. It belongs to us. Nobody can take him. Hey, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. If you are clapping for man, then you need to give a better clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Please, let's just uh, bow down our heads. We are praying. We are committing Pastor and Mama Dorcas. Uh, they will be ministering this morning. We want to pray for grace to be released upon them. Grace will abound towards them. Let the unction of the Lord be released upon them. Let there be fire coming out of their lips. Uh, touching the hearts of the people that will be seated under their ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to make declaration in the name of Jesus, in the realm of the spirit. May God grant unto them upper hand. May God uh, give unto them words. May the words that are given unto them be honored. In the mighty name of Jesus, the words will not be lost in translation. The word will come in power. It will fall on fertile grounds. In the name of Jesus, Kando Zabaha, Rapa Sota. In Talabra and Delia Tanima Zobradia, Rapa Sondele Caperia Tinima Zebe, Remazo Rapo Labazo Yabade, Limra Tinima Zebaro Samna Ramaha, Rapando Santeria Tinima Zebe, Remaco Rapel was Antinima Zobaya, in Nalabahaya. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. How that take preeminence, O God. Take preeminence, rule and reign in your life, so God, and let your word be honored. Let your word fall on fertile grounds. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please, you may take your seats. We thank God for what he has done already in our midst. We thank God for his holy presence in the midst of us. Hallelujah. I'm going to share with us, you know, uh, something that the Lord has laid upon my heart uh, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, those of you that have been coming with us, you know, uh, to Luton, uh, some of it have been shared with the church in Luton. So I just want us to look at this. I believe that uh, Christianity as it is now, the focus and the agenda of Christianity in our times, in our era, in this particular generation, um, if you don't look at it closely, you will be veering off from what the Bible actually wants from us, how we need to live our lives as believers. And you can be deceived, you know, slightly, and you may think that you are doing so well, but in, in, in normal fact, or, you know, uh, if you look closely at the word of God, in close detail, you'll begin to see that we are veering off from 
what is the main agenda or the main focus, the main reason why Jesus Christ came and to save us. Hallelujah. So I believe that um, the word is needed in our times urgently. I thank the head pastor, Mama Dorcas, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. MC, for such a wonderful introduction. Amen. And thank you for being here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, the, 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 the woman that gave birth to me is in the house. Amen. Amen. This is the second time uh, that I'm preaching where she is actually part of the congregation. Amen. The last time, both my parents were here. And uh, my dad is no more. And, you know, my mom is here. Amen. I remember it was about a year and a half ago that they were here. And then, you know, I ministered over here. And most of you will remember that particular day. But most of you would have forgotten the message that I delivered on the day. But strangely enough, what I'm preaching this morning is very close to what I preached on that particular day. And uh, we need to be very sensitive to the message that is being delivered. I don't stand here and choose to preach any word. I know I've been in church for many, many years. Most of you know now, right? I'm going great, yeah? I've been in church for many, many years. There are messages that I can preach to either excite, entertain, to make us all feel good, and all of that. But most of the time, when I'm waiting before God, the message that he delivers to me or drops within my spirit is what I spend my time trying to prepare on to share with us. Amen. The last time I spoke, when my mother was here, I spoke about eternal rewards. That message maybe wasn't liked so much by my dad. But I believe that it was a message for him. And for all of us. Because at the end of the day, what happens after we have left the earth is what is important. The Bible compares our life on this particular earth as like a drop in, in an ocean. If you relate, you know, the lifespan that we have here, most of us will live up to 70, 80, 90. But if you compare that to eternity, life on earth is like a drop in an ocean. So what we need to focus on most of the time is how we prepare to live in eternity. I know that it is a very difficult subject, you know, since there are so many people that will raise uh, questions as to, we don't know what is up <laughs> for us anyway, so why do we have to bother ourselves thinking about what, you know, nobody can actually prove physically or scientifically. But the scriptures tell us that it is appointed unto us once to die, and after death there is judgment, and uh, the scripture tells us that what we are doing here will determine how we are going to live our lives. When we transition, we enter into the next phase of life. Human being is a very complex uh, being. You begin to see that what we have here now is just a body that we are living in now. When somebody dies, his spirit and his soul departs the body. And then the body is left here. And the body becomes what? Uh, you know, earth or soil. But the real you goes on to some, somewhere. It goes on to a, a certain place, a certain dimension. If you look into the word of the Lord, we know that we transition from this particular point and we are either present with the Lord or we wait for judgment to determine our fate. So this morning, I'm going to be sharing briefly about what matters most when we become saved. 
The Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, 9, and 10. The Bible talks about the fact that for we are not saved by our works. We are not saved by anything that we do as such. Salvation is a free gift from the Lord. Salvation is not a matter of what you are doing, the works that you are doing. But salvation comes because Christ Jesus came to die in our place and then he purchased us, he redeemed us. We were once dead and God made us alive when he redeemed us. And then he made us saved. So he says that for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of your works, lest anyone shall boast. But it is the gift of God. Verse 9. It goes on to say, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So when it comes to salvation, salvation is a free gift of God. Something that you have not done anything to, 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 to get, you know, something that has just been given unto you. Christmas is fast approaching. Some of you have already started preparing for Christmas by buying all the gifts that you are going to give to people. The people, the recipients of those gifts, they don't know, you know, how you are suffering, you know, to get those kind of uh, presents and all of that. Yeah? It is a free gift of God. Now, but if you look at that particular scripture, when most of us read those scriptures, what we do is that we just stop there and we say that it is a free gift of God. There is nothing that I can do. So whatever thing that I do does not really matter. But look, the next verse begins to say why we have been saved. So we are saved by faith through Christ, but we are saved for good works. We are saved by Christ, but we are saved for good works. Amen. So him saving us was not just an end. It was a means to an end. And the end is that we will become what? His workmanship. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. Yeah? So you begin to see that he places the argument side by side. He starts off by saying that it is a free gift of God. It is not by your works. But after that particular statement, he moves on to say that for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, the word workmanship over there means craftsmanship or the, uh, the skill, the expertise, the, 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 you know, the, the, the dexterity with which somebody does something. I checked the dictionary and the dictionary says that, you know, that particular word can be used in a sentence like this. You know, the cracks on the motorway reveals or exposes the workmanship of the people that built that particular bridge or, you know, that built that road. So the cracks, yeah. So when we talk about workmanship, it is when something is done, the dexterity with which it is done, the skill with which it is done, the craftsmanship, the expertise that is demonstrated is what he's talking about. For we are, we believers are, his workmanship. So in other words, if somebody wants to challenge God or somebody wants to, you know, argue with God and say that, hey, what is it that you, God, is making or what is it that you have done? He has to look at us. He has to look at the believer, the Christians, the body of Christ. For we all are his workmanship. And the end result of his workmanship is that we will begin to produce good works. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, this is fundamental. It is very important. Because I sit in church and I see that most of us are just trying to do our barest minimum. Whereas, we have the opportunity to push ourselves further and do more for the kingdom of God. Now, the Bible says in James chapter 2 and verse 26 just want to underline one or two things and then 
I will come to the real message that God has given unto me. Good works is a necessary component of we being Christians, of we having been redeemed. James chapter 2 and verse 26. What does it say? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without what? Works is what? Is dead also. So when we go to funerals and then, you know, some, uh, the, the person, the deceased, is laid in state, we see a lifeless body that is there. A lifeless body. There is no life. There is no spirit. There is no soul. But there is a body there. And the Bible is saying, a body without a spirit is what? Is dead. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't question that because we can see that the person is dead. That is the reason why we have even uh, guarded anyway. Right? Now, he's saying that in, in, in much the same way, when you don't produce good works, then you don't have faith. This faith that he's talking about is faith that makes us what? Believers. Faith that makes us Christians. So, Christianity is not an end. It's what? Just the means to an end. Christianity, when you are saved, it is just the starting point of what God really wants from you. So if you become saved and then you, you leave it as that, I would just do the barest minimum. What you are inferring is that, no, you haven't actually been saved. You don't have faith. Because faith without works is what? Is dead. So James will not mean sweat and say to us that show me your works and I will show you my faith. Amen. It's quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. So what we need to be focusing on as believers every single day is how can I do good works? How can I do good works? How would I be able to do the things that in the eyes of God, he considers to be what? Good works. There are so many of us that are involved in projects, like, you know, social projects. It is good, but that is not the main reason why God has called you and has sanctified you and has placed his spirit in you. God called us for a particular reason. And all of us need to identify the reason why he has called us and be actively engaged in fulfilling that particular mission that he has given us. Amen. Amen. Now, let me just take us to, you know, the back of the Bible in Revelations. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 22 and verse 12. Revelations chapter 22. And verse 12. This is very important scripture. Because Revelation is one of the books that when it was written, God actually placed a curse to anybody who would alter the words that had been written. Or, you know, the prophecy that he had given unto uh, his servant John, the revelator. So, verse chapter 22, verse 12 says that, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Amen. To give to everyone according to his what? His work. So Christ's coming, that is what he's coming to do. For believers, when he comes, he comes with his reward in his hand. Amen. To give to everyone according to his work. He's not going to give to every church. High way of holiness. So you can probably hide behind pastor and say that, hey, we are doing homeless projects. We are doing, uh, you know, all of these uh, youth projects. We are doing all of these things. Helping the, this, helping the poor, this, 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 and that. He's, that's not what he's, he's talking about. He's saying that every single one of us within the church... He's going to bring a reward. Now, if you look at that particular scripture, 
is coming quickly. My reward is with me. Now, I have always been asking myself, what will God really come with to reward me? What is it that I have done to deserve a reward? Now, if you look at the definition of reward, it simply says it is a thing given in recognition of service, effort, or achievement. It is something that is given in recognition of something that has been done, an effort, yeah, or a service, or an achievement. Now, so we can begin to ask ourselves, what service, what effort, what recognition have I to deserve what? An award. Recently, we were all celebrating. In this room, I remember, we were excited, jumping about, shouting, celebrating, dancing, eating, making, uh, you know, merrymaking, and all of that. When pastor was recognized for services to his community, right, and to the youth in Haringey, and then he received what? A recognition, an MBE. It is a similar kind of thing that when Christ comes, he is coming to do. And when he comes, you need to have done something. Or was it um, that, you know, they, they, they didn't know <laughs> uh, all of these things? That, that, that they, they knew everything that he has, he has done or he had done over many years before they called him to the palace to do what? to confer on him a reward, a recognition. So the thing, the question that believers ought to be asking ourselves is that when the master comes, when Christ comes, what reward has got your name written on it? What is the reward that he has for you? And it, 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 you, you know, you can't leave it to chance. You know, you can be sure about the reward that you are likely to receive. Because in the scripture, he talks about many, many rewards. He who that overcomes. He who that does this. He who overcomes. I'm going to make him a pillar in my house. He who shall do this, I am going to give him the crown of life. He who does this, I'm going to give him that. I will give him a stone with his name, a name written on, which no one knows. And all of that. There are many scriptures that tell us about the type of rewards that are on offer. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 talks about the fact that to them that would turn many to righteousness, they will shine like stars. They will shine like stars. Daniel chapter 2, uh, sorry, 12 and verse 3. You know, if I quote the scripture, please try and put it there so that it's not that I am just talking. This is what the word of God is saying. Amen. It says, for those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many, not few. Those who turn what? Many, not few. Those who turn what? Many. To righteousness, they shall what? They shall be like stars forever and ever. Emphasis is on the fact that it will be unending. Listen, if this kind of preaching does not excite you, eh, <laughs> then there is something wrong. There is something at stake. Because what most of us are doing is that we are doing every, uh, we are doing some, not many. The focus is not on many. We are just trying to do the barest minimum. Please, Understand that I have been in church for many years. So when I'm talking like this, I know the reason why I'm talking like this. I know that we can do much more for the kingdom of God. Every single one of us has what it takes to be able to do much for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Let's look at Revelations. Once we are there, Revelations chapter 14 and verse 3. It's a scripture that uh, pastor used re recently. And most of the time it is quoted when there are funerals or, you know, some of these uh, services connected to funerals. Revelation chapter 14 and verse uh, 13. 
Hallelujah. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. So, the works and the labors are the ones that are going to follow those that are dead in Christ. Amen. The works and then what? The labors. Makes emphasis on labor. Labor. You know, Christianity is laboring for God. Christianity is actually going all out for God. All the people that started this particular, uh, relig uh, you know, re religion or, you know, whatever you want to refer to as, they labored for God. They made huge sacrifices for God. And we can also make huge sacrifices for God in our generation. Amen. We can do much more for the kingdom of God. Write these things. Blessed are the dead who die in the law from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. So when the works follow you, it is the works that is going to determine the rewards that you are going to get. Amen. You know, when you have many kids and then you go to work and you are coming home and, uh, you know, the kids talking about the, you know, the, 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 the kids that will run to meet you. Uh, some of these kids, when they see you, maybe they don't even want to see you in the house. So th those are not the ones that I'm talking about. Yeah? <laughs> I'm talking about the ones that will run. Yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. To do daddy and all of those things. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, if you've not experienced it, may God grant them to you. <laughs> Some people have experienced it, and you know, they are, they are always in relation that <laughs> we can go back to those days. All right. Now, you know, so you can see that the ones that are always willing to come and rush and meet you are the ones that maybe have been given a sticker at, at school, or they've been given a recognition, or you know, they have done something that is good. Anyone that has broken a, a, a glass or, you know, a plate or they've caused a mess or, you know, something has damaged and stuff like that. The moment they hear you coming, what do they do? They run. To hide. Now, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. This scripture changed my perspective and life many years ago. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have what? Confidence. And not be ashamed before him at his coming. We may have what? Confidence. Confidence to meet him. Confidence to go and meet him. Why? Because we know that he has lots of reward for us. But there would be some that are not going to be confident when they meet him. There will be some that are going to be ashamed. It is no wonder that it is coming from one of the earlier apostles. Because if you remember, when Jesus Christ died and, uh, you know, the church scattered and all of that, before he came back and looked for them and galvanized them and all of that, most of them said, oh, I'm going back to fishing. You know, I've, I've just given up and all of that. And when Jesus appeared, the Bible says that Peter jumped back into the sea. Because he was what? He was ashamed. He was ashamed. He didn't do what the master wanted him to do. 
it is possible that you can be around church, you can be in church, and when he comes, like the children, they, were, they are in the same house, under the same roof. But you see that three of them will be running towards daddy or mommy. But one of them will be hiding. Why? Because he or she is ashamed. He hasn't done the right thing. It is possible that we can be ashamed when he comes. And I pray that that will not be our portion. And it's not enough just to say amen. What I want is that we need to now begin to make decisions as to what I can do to make his coming even more uh, reassuring. That when he comes, I know I have turned many to righteousness. I have turned many to righteousness. I have built the house of God. I have built a church for God. I have helped build the kingdom of God. I have helped advance the kingdom of God. I have led many nations to eternity through teaching of the word of God, the practical demonstration of the love of God to the world. We have done that so as a result of that we are confident to meet him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there is a scripture that I saw uh, this week. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 25. It's talking about, you know, the fact that good works will follow us. Good works will follow us. Amen. Good works will follow us. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 25. Are we there? Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. If you read it like that, you wouldn't understand it. Go back to 24. And let's look at it. He was talking about some men's sins are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment. So, so their sins are in, in, in such, it's so bad that it will precede them. It will come before they even meet God in the judgment. But those of some men, oh, those, but those of some men follow later. So there are some consequences of sin that will follow some people later on. That is, you know, during the judgment. So he goes on 25 to talk about, likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. So any good work that you are doing, it cannot be hidden. You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing too much. Yeah, and it's like, you know, uh, there isn't even any recognition. I'm sacrificing a lot for the house of God. I'm doing this and all of that. What is it that I'm even going to get? from all of this level of dedication and devotion, what is it that I'm going to get? He's saying that if even it is not clearly evident now, it will come up later on when you meet the Lord in judgment. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, be, be rest assured. God will not forget you. Amen. Amen. With that, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. I want to read it from the NLT. New Living Translation. For God is not unjust. Can we all say that together? For God is not unjust. Let's say it again. For God is not unjust. Amen. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Amen. How hard you have worked. You know you can work, but you wouldn't work hard. Or if you don't know, you know, go to the workplace and see. Some people just go there, you know, when, when, when others are working, they begin to call them names. If you are not going to work and I'm willing to work, leave me to work, isn't it? Eh? Why are you calling me names and all of that? Yeah, you, you, you know, isn't it? 
Nana, don't you know? Yeah. Amen. So, so, so he's saying that he is not unjust to forget how hard you have worked for him. Amen. So when I read these scriptures, all that I, I focus on is that, you know what, the expectation is for us to work hard for him. The expectation is for us to work hard for him. Amen. 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 We give God all the glory. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Now let's look at this scripture quickly. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, because of time, I'll read verse 8 going. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So, there was kind of a division in the church in Corinth, and the Bible says that some of them were saying uh, we are for Paul, and others were saying that we are for Apollos, and all of that. So, Paul was writing to them, and saying that it is you know, we are just mere vessels that are being used by God. Then from verse 8, he says, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own what? Labor. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. You know, the emphasis is on reward and then labor. When you labor for God, you are guaranteed what? A reward. When you don't labor for God, you are not guaranteed a reward. Now, let's move on. Verse 9. Verse 9 says that, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear for the day, which is the judgment day, will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is of. If anyone's work which he has built on, on it endures, he will receive a reward. And if anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Amen. So as through fire. Is what he's talking about over there that people are going to feel ashamed. And this level of being ashamed is going to be forever. Because when you see people actually receiving crowns and crowns and crowns, and they are giving what you were entitled for, or you were entitled to, you, you know, when you don't receive it, God will give it to some, some, somebody else. He will give it to others that labored for, for, for him. Yeah? You want me to prove that? You want me to prove that? Okay, let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. And verse... Uh, let's read from verse 21. Matthew chapter 25 and from verse 21. He talks about the parable of the talents. So, okay, let me read from verse 20. He says, so he who received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. He said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Shall we all say that together? Well done, good and faithful servant. One more time. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. You were faithful over few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, 
You delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. He said, Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and, and went and hid your talent. In the ground, look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has what? Ten talents. Amen. So he who had profited with the talents, the giftings, the spirit, you know, everything that God has made available, he was given more. The reward for hard work is what? More work. Amen. The reward for hard work in the kingdom of God is what? More work. Amen. Because when you do more for the Lord, he gives you even more to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So that, that we, we, we need to do more. We need to do more for the kingdom of God. Every single one of us potentially can be able to bring what? More profit to the Lord. Amen. How are we going to do that? Now, when he was commending them, he said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I asked myself, when has it ever been that you would say to somebody, Well done, when the person has not done anything? Would you use those, those, you know, that word, or those, that, that phrase? Would you use it? When somebody has not done anything. So the question is, when do people receive those words? When they are given, well done, good and faithful servant. When, when, when does it normally happen? When somebody has done what? Has done really well. Somebody has gone beyond their way to do even more. He said, I know where you are living. It is the seat of Satan himself. Yeah? My, 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 faithful, my faithful martyr Antipas was even killed over there. I know where you are. But, you know, God bless you for not giving up your faith. And I'm going to reward you. You know, those are the kind of things that will mean that we will receive those words from God. Well done. When it was physically impossible, when all hell had broken loose against you, when it seemed as if, you know, yes, you have become the talk of the town, not for the right reasons, but for the wrong reasons. When you have become the music of many men and women, they are talking negatively about you, they are making mockery about you, they are saying all of the words that they have to say, to mock you, and yet you are committed, you are bent on to advancing the kingdom of God and you are dedicated to see the lives of many turn around for the good of God. You are committed to actually making nations turn to God. You are sacrificing, making an impact. I've come to realize that for you to make an impact, you need to be a flame and then on fire for the Lord. You can never change anybody if you are cold. You can never change anyone if you are not on fire for the Lord. But you need to make certain sacrifices. All of us need to make certain sacrifices to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So bringing it home, in this church, how can we advance the kingdom of God? How can we, uh, you know, let the good works actually begin to speak? for us. There are many uh, things that are, are being done. You've got a homeless project, you've got, you know, all the youth ministries, uh, you've got this skill center running on Saturdays, you've got, um, you know, the music ministry, 
we want more people, you know, actually learning the, the, the instruments. It has to become a church that is always being able to send people to other places and then, you know, we would not have to rely on the same people. We need to train every child so that by the time that, you know, they are being launched out, they are ready to go and advance the kingdom of God wherever that they are. On university campus, they go, they take the bass guitar, they are affecting lives, they take the keyboard, they are affecting lives, they take the microphone, they are actually transforming the lives of men and women. That is what we are called to do. Hallelujah. That is what we are called to do. That has to be our passion. Every single one of us has to, you know, support in any shape or form the best way that we can, whether it's physically or financial. Everybody has got a talent. You remember the other time, I think, uh, Antiana did an illustration about the fact that everybody has got a skill. So if even we wanted to help each other, most of us can be able to receive the necessary help if people are only willing to turn and look at you and begin to support you, you know, in the way that you require. Hallelujah. So we need to rise up. Time is fast, uh, you know, going. Time is running out. The master is calling. The fields are white. You cannot at this stage stand or sit idly by and say that, what is it that I can do? There are lots that can be done for the kingdom of God. We live in a city. Young people are dying by the day, needlessly. We need to turn ourselves or become flames of fire so that we can be able to impact others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you received it? Finally, you need to serve the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100 and verse 2. When you are serving the Lord, you need to put a smile on. Because the reward is going to be great. On that day, when we are calling out names, when the roll is called in yonder, your name shall be there. But when your name is called, is it going to be, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or is it going to be that you will feel ashamed and you will be running away? There is much that you can do. He has given you a talent. If even it's one talent, you can still be able to make very good use of it. Don't hide it because of fear. Don't be afraid to use the gift and the talents that God has placed within you. When he comes, he's not going to be very happy with you. Don't bury the talent. Don't bury the gift. All hands are needed in this work and the ministry of the Lord. We need to advance the kingdom of God in our time. God bless you. You know, I said it. I said this one is highway made. It's highway made. Pastor, thank you. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. I'll be there.